with Susan Sweeney, the other dean here at eLearning U. And today she's going to be answering for us what the future of tourism internet marketing looks like. Susan is an internet marketing speaker. You may have seen her at a, may, may have seen her speak at a tourism conference in the past. She speaks all over the U.S. and Canada. She's a best-selling author of eight books, including 101 Ways to Promote Your Website, as well as Social Media for Business, 101 Ways to Grow Your Business Without Wasting Your Time. Susan is always on top of the latest and greatest trends emerging in the online world, and we're excited to hear from her today as she shares with us some of the amazing technology that we will be seeing in the near future. Uh, we will be doing a 10-minute question and answer period at the end of the session, so please hold on to your questions for the end. And we're going to get started right away. So if everybody's ready, we'll pass it over to you, Susan. That's great. Thank you very much, Kara. And I'm excited today to uh, be the presenter. Usually I'm the uh, introducer and uh, facilitator. We'll um, get started now with, uh, with this session. The future of uh, the travel and tourism. Uh, the future is always closer than you think. Anything that you can imagine uh, is likely already being developed, it's already being tested in beta, um, already being introduced in some markets. Um, when you want to look at the, the future, we've got the near-term future and the long-term future. And uh, I'm going to share with you more the, the short-term future in today's presentation. Um, when you want to look at the, the future of the tourism industry, uh, you want to look at it in several different ways. You want to look at the technology that's available, uh, the technology that's being developed. Uh, it could be for this industry, it could be for other industries. You look at the uh, consumers needs, wants, and expectations. Um, consumers are being um, uh, going through all kinds of different sessions where they're being asked, in an ideal world, if you could have anything that you wanted in this industry, what would it be? And then people are developing based upon those, uh, those wish lists, if you like. Um, another way of tackling the, uh, the future is by looking at the innovations in other industries because quite often technology that's developed in one industry uh, could have application in another. So I'm going to share with you a little video of what's happening in another industry just to show you um, how you can look at in an ideal world what could, um, what could we develop if we were to look at our needs, wants, and expectations, look at uh, the consumers, if they could have pie in the sky, anything that they wanted. South Korea is a unique market. Tesco has been evolving itself, adjusting to the local market. It even changed the name itself from Tesco to Home Plus. And at last, it grew to rank number two in Korea. But Tesco had to overcome one obstacle, a fewer number of stores compared to the number one company, Emart. Mission, could we become number one without increasing the number of stores? We made an in-depth study into Koreans once more. Koreans are the second most hardworking people in the world. For them, grocery shopping once a week is a dreaded task. So we decided to approach these busy and tired people. Idea. Let the store come to the people. We created virtual stores, hoping to blend into people's everyday lives. Our first try was subway stations. Although virtual, the displays were exactly the same as actual stores, from the display to the merchandise. Only one thing was different. We used smartphones to shop. Scan the QR code with your phone, and the product automatically lands in your online cart. When the online purchase is done, it will be delivered to your door right after you get home. People can relax more after work and on weekends. <laughs> Result, people can shop at Tesco Home Plus wherever they go without having to visit the actual store. Moreover, we could change their waiting time to shopping time. After this campaign, online sales increased tremendously. Through this campaign, 10,287 consumers visited the online Home Plus mall using smartphones. The number of new registered members rose by 76% and online sales increased 130%. Currently, 
quickly, Home Plus has become number one in the online market and is a very close second offline. Wow. Amazing what can happen when you think outside the box, when you look at how you can exceed consumers' expectations um, by introducing technology. Um, with, this, with this application in Korea, uh, they started with the objectives. They wanted to have a greater share of wallet. They wanted to uh, sell more. They wanted to meet uh, consumers' needs, wants, expectations, and exceed their expectations and make it nice and easy for them. Um, and, you know, it's really interesting because in North America, we kind of think about the technology that's being used day to day uh, within North America, and we think that we are fairly advanced. Um, it's amazing the technology that gets introduced a whole lot earlier in Europe and in Asia. Uh, North America does seem to lag in technology that's available. Uh, I'm going to show you a few examples of uh, things that are coming down the pike and they're being used in, in Europe and in Asia. You'll see the examples that I'm using, uh, technologies that are a lot more prevalent in other parts of the world than they are here. So uh, the future, sometimes we just have to look outside our borders to see uh, what's, what's uh, being used in other areas before it, before it hits here. Um, we just need to think innovatively, think uh, outside the box, think about um, how we can uh, meet our objectives of uh, selling more, selling more to individual customers, um, creating some buzz about the technology that we're using, um, and create a create a win-win. Um, the more you know about the consumer's needs and wants, the better able, uh, better you're able to exceed their expectations. And uh, a lot of the uh, future is going to be just about uh, keeping up or exceeding the consumer's expectations. Let's take a little look at at a hotel as an example. Uh, if you know about the preferences and priorities about your customer, you can, you're in a better position to be able to exceed their expectations. Um, there are so many opportunities in a hotel to, uh, or a bed and breakfast or a vacation rental, um, you know, in the accommodation side of things, uh, to really exceed their expectations. Uh, looking at the uh, things like the temperature that you have a preference, when you go to a hotel now, you adjust the temperature or the air conditioning to what you want. Um, the uh, wake-up call, wake-up alarm, time, buzz, second call, all those types of things, uh, we generally have our own uh, standard that we use. Every time we go into a hotel, we set the alarm clock and we set it whether we want the alarm or the buzz. Wouldn't it be nice if when we went in there, it was already set to what we wanted, the way that we wanted it? Uh, business equipment. You know, if you're traveling on business, um, do you like to have uh, the wireless internet? Do you want to have uh, a printer in your room? Those types of things. Uh, exercise. If you are into exercise, is it okay if they have a gym? Or do you want to have um, uh, a bicycle or a ball or weights in your room to be able to uh, do the exercise? If you could have anything that you wanted, what would your hotel stay look like? Um, the uh, audiovisual, do you want to have a flat screen TV? What size do you want that TV to be? Uh, what channels do you want to have on it? Do you want to have a shower? Do you want to have a bath? Uh, do you want to have both? Uh, the lighting, um, you know, there's so many different, so many different options that, um, that you can have and that you can make decisions on. So wouldn't it be nice if when you were making your hotel reservation, all of those priorities and preferences were already incorporated into the decision making so that you could choose the place that you're going to stay, whether it's a vacation rental or a and b or a hotel, based upon your priorities and preferences. I mean, this is all pie in the sky thinking. However, it's not really as far away as you would think. Um, let's take a look now. I'm just going to, going to try and come at things from a few different angles to bring you back to what could be. Uh, Timeline has been introduced by, by Facebook, and I just want to show you the video of what Timeline is. Uh, whenever I look at anything, I look at it from a little bit different lens than most. A lot of people will look at Timeline and say, wow, that's really cool. Well, I'll be able to keep track of all these things. Um, from my lens, from an internet marketing lens, I kind of reverse engineer and say, okay, so why are they asking these things? Why are they introducing these things? And I look at it through a marketing eye. So when you look at this, just kind of try and reverse engineer and look at how much information 
Facebook will have on your priorities and preferences that they will be able to use in the future, whether it be for advertising purposes or whether it uh, will help them if they want it to become a, uh, a portal for selling travel, um, how much information they would have on you, your priorities and preferences, your demographic and those types of things. So uh, let's take a look at timeline, but again, just take a look at it through that, uh, through that marketing lens. Look at all of these things that you have access to. Um, married, single, anniversary, places that they visited, how often they visited, how big a traveler they are, who their friends are, um, what movies they watch. Um, you know, there's just so many things that you can know about an individual uh, through, uh, through timeline. Um, it's just absolutely, if you look at it from a marketing lens, you know the age, uh, male, female, you know um, the education level that they have, you know who their friends are, and people hang out with like-minded people. So by doing a, uh, a mash of uh, who they are, their priorities, preferences, and who their friends are, and their priorities and preferences and activities and those types of things, uh, amazing how much demographic information you can gather. Uh, by apps that they're using within Facebook, the, um, you know, the, the travel-related ones, you can see how frequently they travel, the types of places that they stay, uh, how much they spend on travel. It's just a phenomenal amount of information. Uh, you know that they have kids, you know the type of car they drive, you know all kinds of things about an individual uh, through this. So what's going to happen in the future is that there is going to be a virtual you. Uh, a virtual you a you online that is going to be making travel decisions. Now, the virtual you is going to be made up of information gathered from a whole lot of different sources. Facebook timeline just being one of them. Um, you have seen all of the different elements and all of the different criteria and data that they have on you through timeline. Um, then also, because they know who your friends are on Facebook, uh, they've got a lot of other demographic information. And then you've You've gone out and taken a look at a lot of different sites, and now you can like websites. So uh, they have all of your likes, whether it be posts on somebody's wall, um, websites that you've liked, uh, pages that you like, those types of things. So there's a lot of good information there that will go into the uh, makeup of the virtual you. But then you, you uh, leverage that as well with the loyalty programs. You know, if you're a frequent traveler, you're a member of... Uh, all of the various hotel and car rental uh, and airline loyalty programs. And there's an awful lot of information in there on your priorities and preferences. With a lot of the hotel loyalty programs, they're all different, but they will ask things like about pillow preference and uh, those types of things. So you, they've got a lot of great information that will feed into the virtual you. Um, information on past days uh, at hotels, car rentals, uh, vacation rentals, etc. Uh, so there's a lot of information on, uh, on you, on the virtual you there. Also, the credit card companies have a lot of information on your uh, travel, uh, your past travel. 
uh, how much you spend, where you stay, what types of uh, things you spend money on when you travel, and that type of thing. Um, then you've also got the places that you visit online. So when you go to, uh, to iTunes and Amazon, the types of books that you download, any travel related, I mean, if you've, if you've bought three or four books on Amazon about uh, budget travel or about travel to Hawaii, that type of thing, so a lot of good, a lot of information there. Amazon itself has this information on, well, if you like this, you'll probably like this as well. So all of those things will be able to come into play in the virtual you. Uh, and then any social bookmarks that you use, Digo bookmarks as an example, uh, you bookmark different sites for different purposes. That again can feed into the virtual you. you the online purchases, uh, any purchases that you've made for travel, hotel, uh, car rental, vacation rental, B&B, &B, uh, restaurants, etc. Um, so any purchases that you've made and then the comparison to other people who bought this <laughs> also bought this. So you, if you if you put all those things together, the virtual you, um, there's an awful lot of great information that could be had in the future uh, on this virtual you. Now, there's no such thing as just the one virtual you um, because you're different people at different times. Um, I, I would have at least three virtual me's, <laughs> multiple personas. Um, when I travel with my husband, uh, then I've got a different set of priorities and preferences than when I travel with my family, than when I am traveling on business. So, you know, if I'm traveling with my husband, I like to have, you know, soft music in the room, a nice room, king-size bed, internet access, large screen TV, robes, spa, you know, those types of, uh, those types of things. Um, when I'm traveling with my family, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, and again, I'm going to have a different persona when I travel with my family. When I'm traveling on business, you know, um, if I was to do an RFP for when I do my internet marketing boot camps and things like that, um, I've got a different set of preferences. It's always the room is set up classroom style. I need an LCD projector and a screen. Uh, I want to have audio to my computer, internet access, lunch is outside the room, you know, so a number of different things that I would have in my profile or my persona uh, when I'm traveling on business. So uh, there is an awful lot of information already and also in the future there will be many more uh, or a lot more information that will go into the uh, the development of my persona so that it makes it very easy when I would go to make a booking um, I'll book it using one of my personas in the future so the first thing is that um, which virtual persona will I use when I'm making a booking the next thing is where, where am I going to make this booking um, am I going to make it on the, um, am I going to make it through my mobile device? Am I going to make it through a tablet? Am I going to make it through a, a laptop computer, a desktop computer? Uh, God knows, you know, all the different options that you've got to be able to access the internet. Uh, so again, forewarned is forearmed, so you need to be ready for, uh, any device that somebody's going to want to access and make a booking in the travel industry. Uh, one thing that's really, really important uh, and coming very, very quickly, um, this stat says by 2014, mobile internet should take over desktop internet usage. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's sooner than that. Mobile is uh, just going gangbusters. Um, it's, uh, it's really taking, taking hold. So anybody who is selling travel online should be uh, should have now their mobile strategy in place and it should be a documented strategy it should be a well thought out strategy uh, not just that you're making your website mobile friendly now am I gonna book through the hotel website possibly um, that's the way we've always done it uh, I'll go to the B&B &B, or I'll go to the vacation rental or I'll go to uh, a hotel website and I'll make a booking well in the future we've got a lot more options it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here um, Facebook has really developed now we've got not only can you have you know your wall and your photos and things like that but with the introduction of the iframes now anything that you've got on your website can also be on your Facebook page. So, you know, back a few years ago, people were saying about, you know, social media. And my initial thoughts, and my thoughts change all the time as new things are being introduced, I was thinking, well, you know, if you send the traffic to your website, that's where they can buy. 
If you send the traffic to your social media, then they've got to go back to your website before they can buy. So it didn't make a whole lot of sense to send them to your social media. But now with the uh, iframe capability within Facebook, they can now add a reservations tab in the Facebook page. So, I mean, in the future, do you even have to have a website? Interesting concept. Um, on your Facebook uh, page, you can have everything that you've got on your website. You can have your um, e-club sign up, you can have your reservation, you can have um, you know any information that you would have on a website you can have uh, on your Facebook page. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how many people are booking direct through social media versus how many people are still booking through your website. And you know this just shows the importance of your analytics and keeping track of what's happening, uh, what's happening where. So going to be interesting to see. I know that we will see a greater shift of uh, reservations through the social media. So that's something that we want to look at and take take care of. Then we've got, you know, people are going to book through the website, through the social media, or they're going to go to any one of the uh, of the third-party sites. Now, I'm looking at all of these possible third-party sites to book travel, and I can tell you that there is not enough money to make every single one of these guys financially stable and, um, and run a profit. Um, just like back in the olden days, we used to see a lot of different search engines. You know, there was... Uh, Hotbot and Excite and Lycos and all those different search engines and um, you know they, they're all not around today. Uh, the main players in the whole travel side used to be uh, Expedia, Orbitz and Travelocity. Well now there's a whole lot more and there's some interesting things going on in this uh, in this whole area. On a recent trip that I took to, uh, to Toronto um, I um, I had a flight and I had a hotel and this happened in both instances which really made me uh, you know open my eyes to what is possibly happening or what can happen in this in this area uh, we were going up to Toronto because our daughter was running in the Toronto Marathon and so there were three of us um, I went online and I found a, a decent rate it was about $300, I think, for a suite at the Sutton Place in, in downtown Toronto. Uh, and it was hard to get a room because there were 26,000 people who were running in this marathon. So you can, you, you know, you can imagine that a, there was a big run on hotel rooms. Um, when I, so I booked, uh, I looked at, found it on Travelocity, uh, went to the Sutton Place Hotel website, and they could not match the rate, even though they had a best rate guarantee. Interesting. Uh, they said, well, on Travelocity you have to pay immediately, and so therefore it's not the same as booking on our website, and they could not match the price. So I went back to Travelocity, and I booked the suite. Uh, and I said, you know, what I wanted to, it was, there were three people traveling, I wanted to have two queen beds. So uh, then, I, then I booked my flight on Travelocity as well. And um, so I booked the, uh, booked the plane tickets for all three people. I chose my seats. All three of us were sitting together on the way up, and all three of us were sitting together on the way back. So I thought, okay, everything is great and done. I get to the airport. I check in. Um, they tell me that uh, our seats are scattered all over the plane. I said, no, no, no. I booked online, and I chose the seats. They said, did you book on our website? And I said, no, I booked on Travelocity, but it linked through to the seat selection, and it showed me what was available and what wasn't. And they said, oh, you know, next time you should just book directly on our website because then you're definitely in our system and you definitely will get those seats. When you book with those third parties, you know, often you just don't get those seats that you ask for. So, you know, immediately I got a little bit suspicious. I thought, okay, is that, that's interesting. The travel, when I was on Travelocity, it showed me the seats, uh, that were available, but when I get to the hotel, when I get to the airport, I get something completely different. Next time, will I book directly with the airline? Possibly. A little squeeze out of these third party. Then um, when I got into the hotel, I went to check in, and uh, when I went to the room, there was one king-size bed. 
not really what you want when you've got three people. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I went to the desk and I said, no, no, we booked for three people. Um, you don't ordinarily give a king size bed for three people, do you? I asked for, for two queens. They said, did you book directly on our website? I said, no, I booked on Travelocity. Oh, well, you know, gee, we don't always get the same information. You know, next time, maybe you should book direct with us. Interesting to see what, what could possibly be happening behind the scenes. Not saying it's happening, just saying could possibly be happening. Uh, in any case, there's not enough revenue for the hotels and the B&Bs and the vacation rentals and, and all these sites to be making uh, enough money to make them all financially viable. So I think what we're going to see is a uh, reduction of the number of sites that you will, just like Google took over the big market share, uh, you're going to see the same thing happen in the online reservation uh, world. Um, a new player, we've got Google starting to play, the Google Hotel Finder. Um, I'm going to show you a quick little... Um, a quick little video on Google, Google Hotel, Hotel Finder, Finder is just in the experimental stages, but I think it is going to give you an indication of where um, hotel searching is going to go in the future. When you look at Google Hotel Finder, down the left-hand side, you have a number of options. So if I'm looking for a hotel close to Fort Myers, I just put in the zip code 33917. And when I put that in, it gives me a map. Now, I can edit that uh, map. I can say, you know what, I want to be, I don't want to go over to that uh, east side. I want to, um, I can go closer down to the beach. I'm, I'm happy uh, down closer to the beach. My area this way. And... Um, Zoom in, zoom out. So I've got my I've got my shape decided. Let's see. I don't want to go any further west than Highway 75. So there's my uh, there's my shape. Uh, what dates do I want to travel? Um, I'm going to go in on November 1st and um, out on November 5th. Pricing, how much do I want to spend? Uh, and I can put it in a dollar amount or I can say compared to the hotel's typical price. I just want to go a little bit on the lower end. I don't want to be paying top dollar. Um, only show hotels with price or you can show others. The hotel class and user rating. So I say that I want it to be a four-star hotel and user rating. So I only want people that have given it, a, you know, a three out of five rating. So that is going to give me, um, that's going to give me my parameters. And then I can go and take a look at the lists at, to see who matches that particular criteria. So I've got the resort at uh, Marina Village, but it's only one hotel. So... I'm going to go back in and because uh, I want to have more options than that. So I'm going to say I'll go to a three-star hotel. Well, that automatically opens up a whole lot of other hotels in that particular in that particular area. And here I can see the uh, how many stars. I can see the user rating. I can see the price per night and compared to typical, 21% uh, less, 7% less, 18% less, and. Um, then I can actually even go and take a closer look at the Best Western Airport Inn as an example. <clears throat> I can get some more details. Reviews by Google users. Nice room and a good location. Um, I get some pictures. 20 photos in all. So I can browse through the photos of that particular hotel. I'm done with I'm just going to stop it there, uh, but you can see that that Google Hotel Finder is uh, a little different than a lot of the third-party uh, sites now that you can that you can book a hotel through. Now, but just imagine future uh, if my virtual persona is plugged in there as well, so that I could say I'm um, my business persona or my couple persona or my family persona and you plug that in as another parameter 
uh, not only on, on price and location and date, but one that matches my persona as well, uh, it will come up with hotels that, uh, or accommodations that better fit my persona. So this is where things are, are going. So it's going to be, which virtual persona are you, which hat are you wearing today? Where am I going to buy? And then what am I going to experience once I get there? Um, we're in Europe. Uh, this is this is fairly common. The automatic hotel check-in, no lineups at the uh, at the front counter. But we're going to see a big change in this near field communication. Near field communication, we're seeing it already uh, in a number of different instances. You know, you can uh, swipe your mobile phone by at Starbucks to pay for your coffee. Um, you can use it a number of different places. Near field communication is being used in a lot of other industries. And this is why I said take a look at, what, at what's happening technology wise and take a look at what's happening in other industries to see what could possibly happen in yours. Um, you, if you drive a, a, a Lexus or a BMW, um, you, they're using near field communication, one, to even start the car without the key when you're uh, when your your key is in your purse, but it's you know you're you're getting into your vehicle that type of thing. So near field communication is going to be absolutely huge in a number of different applications in the travel and tourism industry in the future. And let's just look at a few of those. Um, Google, we're making a huge bet on NFC near field communication as a company. There's a lot of potential there, and they are really making. Um, uh, Google is kind of betting the farm on this. And it's not a it's not a, a far fetch. Here's a here's a video of what's happening again in Europe. It's happening outside of North America, um, but what can happen and what likely will happen here in the future. So with this, uh, what's happening already is that you can book your reservation uh, online and then you can check in through your mobile device. Now, let's just kind of think pie in the sky because we're talking future here. Um, if your virtual persona was tied into that reservation, there's technology right now that you can adjust the temperature in your house through your mobile device. There are apps available for that. So if you're... Uh, if you're virtual persona said what temperature you wanted the room to be at, then uh, the hotel or the B&B or the vacation rental could, do, could adjust the temperature. Once you check in, it can adjust a number of things um, in that accommodation to your, to your priorities and preferences. Um, I see this uh, mobile check-in being used in a number of different places. Um, take the vacation rentals. Uh, with a vacation rental, now you've got to, they've got to stop in and pick up the key to be able to go to the vacation rental to, uh, to get access. Well, you know, if you've got this, uh, this mobile access, it can, be, uh, it can be done on the fly that when somebody is checking in, the code is reset uh, on that device on the vacation rental uh, door. I mean, it means now it's an easier process for the individual traveling. They don't have to check into the vacation rental or the vacation rental company doesn't have to go out and drop off a key uh, or be there when the people arrive. Again, the other technologies that come into play, adjusting the room temperature, setting the music, those types of things, can all be done remotely today. It's just a matter of putting all the applications together in one place. Um, you know, again, with the vacation rental, this just kind of makes sense because... Um, if somebody leaves without dropping off the key to that vacation rental, what do you have to do? You know, is there an, is there another key that's floating out there in uh, um, you know in the world where somebody could go back into that vacation rental? Um, by using this type of technology, it changes uh, the code every single time. So it's um, 
you know, it's it's probably a whole lot more practical than having uh, having the keys to the uh, to the property. So interesting how these things are going to play out in the accommodation side of things. Um, the virtual persona that you have, your priorities and preferences, it can adjust a number of different things. Uh, things like the uh, the air conditioning, whether it's set and what temperature, uh, the audio visual. So it could be what channels you want to have on the television, uh, music. Music can be playing when you arrive. It can be set remotely, uh, even the type of music. Uh, do you want to have uh, country, soft, uh, upbeat, you know, those types of things. Um, with uh, other things like the, the robe and the bed and the pillow and those types of things, those can be uh, in, a, in a hotel environment uh, that they would have certain rooms with uh, a certain type of bed, a certain type of pillow. So it match, it, will, it would match as close as possible the room that they give you to your virtual persona for those types of applications. Um, when you arrive and there's a, a menu, you know, there's a standard uh, menu in the room. Well, you know, if, if they know that you're gluten-free, then the gluten-free menu can be uh, on the television set type of thing. So lots of different things that can play to making your experience a whole lot better uh, and a whole lot more customized in the future. Um, during the stay, location-based deals. Now, these are this is happening. The technology is already here, but not a lot of organizations are taking advantage of these location-based deals. Um, but the location-based deals that are fed to you can be, again, personalized. Right now, there are location-based deals that are available to everybody. It's the one deal. But these in the future will be personalized to your priorities and preferences. And they'll be personalized based upon the last time you stayed in that particular hotel or, or vacation rental or that town. Uh, what did you do? Based upon your persona and your priorities and preferences, based upon the information that's in the loyalty program. So based on a whole lot of different things, the location-based deals that are fed to you uh, can be very different and customized. Uh, another quick little video here that will show you Reaching customers at the point of need represents a huge opportunity, and Telenav's mobile ad platform makes it happen. We drive customers. Now let's add to this if Telenav needs your priorities using and preferences. Using their mobile phones to search for new places to go. We use search and GPS data to deliver highly targeted, location-relevant ads to customers at the point of need. In fact, 84% of Telenav searches occur when users are in their car. When a driver searches for a business, he finds an engaging mobile ad that is... I'm just going to stop this here. This is available today, but now let's just add that extra element of your persona that will then be fed into this as well. Uh, because they know that, you know, you don't like Greek food or you don't like, you know, your, your, your priority is going to be a certain type of restaurant or a certain uh, type of attraction. And then those will appear at the top of the, uh, of the search results. You'll be fed more your priorities and preferences. Relevant to both his search and location. The ads include detailed information about the business. And advertisers can include deals and coupons. Even now, as a business, uh, right now you should be looking at these types of applications and looking at how you can participate. Knowing that the world is going mobile, that people are looking for um, you know, where to stay, what to do, where to eat, uh, all these types of things. Um, everybody in the travel industry should be looking at the mobile apps that people are using and looking at how you can participate. Uh, a lot of people like to, you know, save, uh, save a buck. So if you can have your deals or your coupons available through these mobile applications, uh, you're going to see more business. A lot of people, uh, a lot of these applications, uh, sometimes you have to pay for it to get placed at the top of the search results. Uh, those types of things, you've got to pay a little bit extra to be able to put in your coupons and that type of thing, but it's money well spent. Um, and again, you do the tracking to make sure that you're getting a good return on your investment. In a menu or a list of services, users can then choose to call, see the business's location on a map, or drive to the location. Turn right to Ray Street. It couldn't be simpler. Comprehensive reports let advertisers say goodbye to the ROI guessing game. We tell you exactly how your ads are performing. Our mobile ads are perfect for restaurants, hotels, retail outlets, gas stations. In fact, any business customers drive to. Our results speak for themselves, and advertisers are taking note. When compared with other channels, Telenad's mobile ads have the clear advantage. 
They are highly targeted, location relevant, and delivered at the point of need. Who else will drive customers straight to the door? That's the power of Telenet. We drive customers. So this is here already, um, the location-based mobile advertising. Uh, we're not, you know, there are a lot of uh, the travel industry that's not there yet in terms of taking full advantage. Uh, the first man gets the oyster, the second man gets the shell. So you should always be looking at um, how should you be playing in this whole mobile side of things uh, to, 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 you know, to get your fair share of the, uh, of the market. Uh, another thing that's happening with uh, location-based deals, and again, just picture this in the future based upon your virtual persona. Quick, pull me out, pull me out! Uh, what is it now? There's a deal right here! 20% off printer paper. I needed printer paper. I knew you did, dog. BobSob.com is the new free location-based mobile coupon service. No need to clip, cut, buy, or forget coupons at home because they're all right here on your mobile phone. I saved her 20% off her pizza. I got him a buy one, get one free. This is something that, that I've been talking about for years, uh, that you know when you walk by a Starbucks, because of the GPS in your mobile device, uh, and because of your priorities and preferences, and because you've subscribed, uh, it will give you the deals that are available as you're passing by or you're in that place to be able to take advantage of, uh, of that deal. Uh, mobile commerce. This is something that has been available in Europe for a while, uh, particularly, I mean, Nokia customers, they have, uh, uh, Nokia is in, uh, in Europe, and they have had mobile commerce for a while where you can, uh, you know, beam your your mobile device at a pop machine and it'll pay for your pop or beam it at a parking meter it'll pay for your parking um, but uh, fairly new to uh, to North America and uh, so being able to pay with your mobile device okay. Let's kick it. Hi, I'm Rob and I'm John. We're software engineers at Google, and we're here in New York City today to tell you about an exciting new product called Google Wallet. A couple of years ago, we got to thinking. My Android phone has already replaced this, and this, and even this. So why the heck was I still carrying around this monstrosity? We went off and did some research, and we think we've come up with a better, safer way. Introducing Google Wallet the app that makes your phone your wallet. Google Wallet holds offers, loyalty cards, credit cards, just like you have today in your regular wallet. And eventually also transit cards, boarding passes, tickets, and much more. We've worked with Citibank and MasterCard on the first credit cards. So if you have a city... Now, notice here, uh, Google Wallet holds your credit card, your loyalty programs, See where I'm going with this whole virtual you? Uh, the information that they have on your purchases, your loyalty programs, all those things are going to come in uh, to one place where you will have the virtual you. MasterCard, you can add a virtual version of it to your Google Wallet. If you don't have a City MasterCard, you can set up a Google prepaid card and fund it with any of your existing credit cards. You can tap and pay using Google Wallet in hundreds of thousands of places across the U.S., anywhere a MasterCard pay pass is accepted. During the tap, Google Wallet securely transmits your information using a technology called Near Field Communication, or NFC for short. Google Wallet also makes savings simple. When you save or buy a Google offer, it's automatically synced to your wallet, and you can redeem it by tapping your phone or showing the barcode to the cashier as you check out. And in case you're wondering, you lock Google Wallet with a pin, so it's more secure than a physical wallet. And that's just the beginning. We're constantly working to improve the wallet. Google Wallet. Tap, pay, and save. Now, not all customers are alike. You know, uh, some, some of the uh, customers, you've got all kinds of different people who are looking for different things, you know. Uh, perhaps the mobile user is not looking for the hotel they're making the reservation a little bit in advance uh, but they are looking for the restaurant or the spa or the parking when they arrive in a particular destination on the other hand uh, we are seeing more and more people using a mobile device depending on the type of travel that they're doing uh, booking their hotel on the fly when they get to a particular destination uh, last September I spent a, a month in Europe the only thing that I took was a phone and an iPad 
and we had one night reservation. Everything else was booked on the fly based upon uh, the technology that I could access uh, at the time. And it was amazing. It was We had fantastic uh, accommodations in, uh, I think it was 12 countries that we visited. So, um, you know, you need to think about all of the different types of customers that you have and make sure that what you've got, you're making available uh, for those particular customers. The augmented reality is something that we're going to see a whole this lot more Rev, of. The new augmented reality view in Zagat to go for iPhone. I'm automatically seeing nearby restaurants and their ratings wherever I look with the iPhone. You'll notice I can interact with the controller and virtually walk down the street with the iPhone. I can tap the restaurants to see the full review and details. And all of this is seamlessly integrated into sagat to go I can easily go back to listings, switch to a map view, or select the augmented reality view again. Now again, this is something that is uh, being used a lot more in Europe than it's being used in North America at this point, but uh, will come to uh, you know come to um, uh, be used a whole lot more in North America. And as a professional in the travel and tourism industry, you want to make sure that you are using uh, this technology that others are using to make decisions on where they're going to stay, where they're going to eat, and those types of things to your best advantage. Um, as you scroll through, you can see uh, the menu. You can make an online reservation. Uh, you can post a comment about your experience at that particular uh, at that particular merchant. So you want to uh, take a proactive approach and look at how you can uh, encourage the people that stay with you or eat at your restaurant uh, to put in good, valuable comments uh, to you know so that you'll stand out. If I'm going down uh, a road in um, you know in a particular city and I see a restaurant with no reviews and one that has uh, ten great reviews, which one am I going to choose? So you need to kind of play the game. Uh, and I mean, technology is just scary where this is going. Uh, here's augmented reality taken to the next level. Hello. Um, so I'm on this webpage from GE called Augmented Reality, and they have this thing where you print out um, called the Smart Grid, and you hold it up to your webcam, and uh, it does this whole 3D kind of thing. Uh, it's pretty neat. Um, as you can see, I'm talking to the webcam, but this is what happens. This is what happens when you hold it up to the webcam. So it's this paper, and that comes out. So it basically follows your paper. Um, anywhere you go. It's really cool. Um, you can blow on it like this. The, uh, the augmented reality going to 3D, I mean, anything that you can dream, that you can think about, that could possibly, I mean, this, I couldn't even possibly think that this might even come to play. So it's, uh, it's interesting what's already available out there. How would this be used in travel and tourism? Well, let's see. If you were uh, a venue that hosted weddings, uh, could you could possibly, if it would make sense, if you could see a good return on investment, if you could get some good buzz and have uh, this thing go viral. Um, you could show the, um, the, the venue and show a wedding taking place at that, at that venue. So, you know, there are lots of different uh, applications. You just need to kind of think outside the box. Another thing that's, uh, that's happening in travel and tourism that's, that's kind of neat, through mobile, the translation. Translates the text instantly and will also actually do the reverse. It'll translate it into English, or it, you can go to English and translate it into the language that you're interested in. Uh, 
uh, the future. Uh, I think there's going to be a huge focus on solo mo, uh, social, 49% uh, book based on friends, peers, reviews. Uh, social media is uh, alive and well, and just uh, we're, we've just hit the tip of the iceberg. Uh, mobile, 19% of hotel queries come from mobile, and with the mobile, you've got the click to call. Uh, capability. We're going to see a whole lot more of that happening in the near term. The apps as well, the um, and then the location-based services. We're going to see a huge increase in the location-based services. So in terms, just a real quick overview of what I see is happening in the future. Um, the selection of um, in the travel industry, whether it's accommodations, restaurants, attractions, um, what? how are people going to access it? Computer? iPad? The uh, tablet-based devices are just skyrocketing, and you do have a large enough screen to be able to view, so um, I think that that's, that's going to be a lot bigger in the future. Mobile is just skyrocketing. Um, search, where are people going to search? They're still going to use the search engines uh, to a certain extent, but we're also seeing a huge review in the travel review sites, and also w the capability that they're going to have within those uh, travel review sites will grow exponentially. Um, and again, the social, location-based, and the augmented reality, I think we'll see a lot more of that in, uh, in North America. Uh, the check-in, we're going to see a big difference in that, the mobile check-in. Uh, I think that's something that will take off. And I think it'll be a few years before we see the whole um, uh, combination of the virtual me and the mobile check-in and having uh, everything when I arrive to my priorities and preferences. Uh, we'll see some of the accommodations uh, embrace that more than others. Maybe the more higher end uh, will embrace those things. But I think that the technology will be there that a lot of people will be able to uh, use a little technology to, uh, to really personalize the experience, whether it's a and b or vacation rental. Uh, those options are all there as well. But this near-field communication is going to be absolutely huge and will be, um, will be used in a lot of different areas in the travel industry. During the stay, uh, location-based deals, I think that we'll see those enhanced to be based upon the virtual persona uh, and, and past priorities and preferences. The uh, augmented reality will be used a whole lot more in the, uh, you know, during the stay. And then the mobile apps, things to do, things to see, um, the coupons, those types of things. We'll see a whole lot more uh, use of that. And then the checkout, uh, you know, it just makes sense to go for the mobile checkout and the mobile commerce uh, to pay for that. So that's just a real quick overview of where I see uh, in the short term travel and the future. Okay, thanks, Susan. That was a really great session. It's almost scary to think about the incredible things that some of this new technology is capable of. So it's really great for us to have a bit of a heads up so that we can all know what to expect. Uh, we're going to get to questions in just a second, but before we do, I just wanted to mention to everyone that you're going to be seeing a survey pop up when this course is finished. If you fill that out, you'll be entered to win a free eLearning U course. We give away one of these every week, and we're happy to hear your feedback on the courses. So uh, please take a second to tell us your thoughts when we finish up today. So now on to the questions. Uh, for those of you who have not attended a course before, to ask a question, you can simply type it there in the question box that you see on your screen, or you can use the raise hand button, and I will unmute you so that you can ask your questions to Susan directly over the microphone. Um, and as always, if any questions come to mind after the session, feel free to visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash elearningu, and we'll make sure to get them answered for you. So I have a couple of questions here for you already, Susan. The first one is, uh, are there any industries that seem to stay ahead with technology in particular that we should pay attention to to get ideas? Oh, well, um, one that I think, not that everybody uses it in that industry, but there are lots of um, uh, introductions of technology, is real estate. Um, you know, I was seeing real estate use QR codes way before uh, way before the travel industry using QR codes and before they really became commonplace. Um, so real estate is one area that I see um, that, that I see embracing technology. But there are bits and pieces of, of technology, certainly in the in the software development uh, side of things, um, you know your and mobile apps. <clears throat> if you um, if you look at uh, sites that show latest and greatest uh, technology or advancements in technology, uh, it 
it could be in any industry, but you can also look at how that could possibly be used in your industry. But real estate, I, I think, is probably the first one that comes to mind. Okay, uh, the next question that I have here is, wow, I've never heard of Google's Hotel Finder. How can I make sure that my hotel is included in this database? Will it just pick up on our Google Maps listing? Um, I think that it does pick up on your, your Google Maps uh, listing, but, um, you know, there, there are uh, many opportunities in there to make sure. And, you know, with uh, it's amazing how many hotels, uh, accommodations, vacation rentals, B&Bs, have um, their listings in a lot of different places, um, but they're not looking at... Uh, are those the most recent photos? Uh, is that the best description? Do I have an opportunity to put in coupons or specials or packages? Um, so uh, with every single place where your accommodation may be, you should you know make a put it in your in your strategy that once a month you're going to go out and visit these places uh, to just take a look and see how you're listed. Can you do anything better? Have they introduced any new uh, features or options for you to participate? Uh, I know that TripAdvisor, as an example, they're always introducing new things for um, accommodation providers uh, where you can have uh, you know, a more enhanced listing. Uh, you can add additional features. Um, and uh, you know, even just, just keeping up with those things, you can, you can stay ahead. But, uh, you know, again, go to Google Hotel Finder, and I'm sure that there's a link there that will say, um, you know, are you a hotel, are you a B&B, et cetera. Uh, and, again, go into TripAdvisor as well if you're not already uh, participating in a big way on TripAdvisor because it's a, one, of, one of the sites that's very heavily used for people looking for accommodations. Okay. Uh, the next question that I have for you here is, you mentioned Europe a few times during this presentation. Is that the best geographic location we should focus our research on when we're trying to find innovative technologies that other hotels are using? Are there any other places we should keep our eye on? Um, Europe and Asia both seem to be the uh, seem to be the the leaders. However, you know, don't put in a geographic location when you're looking at um, you know if you're um, if you're a, a hotel, then go in and do a search on. Uh, hotel check-in technology, hotel services technology, hotel, um, you know, whatever uh, technology, and then see what pops up. Um, you know, there are lots of places. Go to, when you do a, a Google search, click on the, um, click on the videos, and, um, you know, anybody who's developing any latest and greatest technology is going to have that available by way of video. Um, and so it'll take you to the developer site where usually they've got the uh, the technology shown. So um, you know, yeah, Europe um, and Asia would be would be the uh, the two that I think are further ahead. I mean, way back when I was in international trade, um, back in like in the early '90s when I went to uh, to Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, I couldn't believe the cell phone usage. I mean, everybody walking down the street. Uh, nobody was talking to anybody else. They just had the cell phones to their ears. And um, it wasn't the case in North America at the time. And uh, so, yeah, these, these two areas seem to be uh, really, you know, moving ahead quickly and um, adapting to, to technology faster. Um, but again, when you're doing some research, um, you know, don't limit it geographically. Look for, do a search in Google on what you're looking for and just leave the geographic out of it. Okay, great. Uh, the next one that I have here is uh, what, analytic, what analytics do you recommend to keep track of website traffic, especially our mobile traffic? Um, well, you know, it's, it, there, you've got lots of options, but um, the... Um, uh, Google Analytics will provide you with uh, with a lot of the information that you need. Some of the uh, applications do provide uh, some good analytics in and of themselves, uh, and a lot of different sites that you use will provide the analytics. If you notice the Tel, uh, I, I believe it was the Telnav um, application, uh, when you advertise in that, it provides you back with uh, with the analytics. Uh, but you know, again, your your insights in uh, in social media and Facebook, um, so you can get your analytics a lot of different places. Most places now that are providing technology are also providing the analytics. 
you know, if you go into, uh, if you're using Bitly as a, a URL shortener, they've got analytics. I mean, everybody's got the analytics. Um, but the, the Google is probably going to provide you with, uh, with a lot of what you need. You can go fairly extensive, and I showed this in another presentation, um, on the on the analytics, but you can get, go really deep. Uh, I think Click Tracks is probably a, a really good one um, that will show the um, the the progress of people as they travel uh, through your site, or uh, and show where they dropped off. And it'll there are other things that you can use to show heat maps uh, where people's focus was on a particular site. Um, with Click Tracks, you can make changes to your site and see the impact side by side. You can see uh, three days before and three days after to see what uh, what actually resulted in the difference. Uh, so you can see that, well, before I had this big red uh, click me now button, uh, nobody went there, but afterwards, you know, 27 percent of the people went there. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, of great analytics tools. just depends on uh, how sophisticated you want and, and really what you want to spend. Okay, perfect. And I just have one last question here for you. Uh, the last one that I have is, what would you suggest as a next step for us to get involved with some of these new technologies? Which of the technologies that you mentioned would be the best place to start, or do you see getting big the soonest? Wow. How, that's, a, that's a pretty loaded question. It really depends on um, the type of business that you have. It depends upon, uh, you know, with everything, I always suggest that you go back to your objectives, your target markets, your products and services. Um, you know, when I work with uh, with a client in, in developing their strategy or, or next steps, um, you know, we, we just always start off with, uh, where are you now? What do you have? What's working and what's not? And then to go to the next level, okay, what are the objectives? What are the specific objectives? Um, who's the target market to, you know, for those particular objectives? Um, and, um, you know, what product or service are, is it specifically that you're trying to promote? And then you look at the best way of achieving that objective. Um, and different objectives are going to have different uh, ways of going about it. Um, you know, if you wanted to uh, sell more uh, room nights, as an example, uh, and you don't have an iframe in your Facebook page, but you've got a lot of uh, fans or people who like your Facebook page, um, then, you know, that might be the, the next step. But if you've already got that iframe with the reservation capability and you want to do more sales, then maybe the strategy would be in doing more uh, packaging if you wanted to increase your share of wallet or increasing the number of people who like or creating something uh, that would go viral, you know. So... There, there's there's no way of saying what's the next step. It, it's so individual. There are no two um, tourism professionals or tourism businesses that are alike. You always need to start with where you are now, and where you want to go. <laughs> and uh, so you start off with the you know the the top three objectives for your particular business, and then you tackle each objective you know, one by one by one, and then develop a strategy for that. But uh, it's amazing how many organizations do not have a documented internet marketing strategy or social media strategy. And if you don't have that, that would definitely be the first. Uh, you need to know where you are. You need to know where you want to go and how you're going to get there. So hopefully it's not answering your question in terms of specifically uh, what the next steps would be, but um, hopefully it gives you some information or a little bit of advice on on how to get to that next step. Okay, that's great. Well, that's all the questions that I have here. Again, if anyone else has any questions that come up after the course, or if you're listening to the recording and have any questions, feel free to check us out on Facebook, and we'll make sure that uh, we get your questions answered. And actually, I just have a question that just came up. <laughs> sorry, the last question here. Uh, wondering where, um, sorry, where you were leading us on the topic of booking engines. Um, with the booking engines, what I was uh, talking about there is that right now there are so many different uh, there are so many different options in terms of third party. I think this is where you're asking. Um, there are so many options out there with uh, in terms of third party. They're not all going to be around forever. Uh, where I see the future is that we're going to see a smaller number 
of uh, third-party sites where you'll be able to book in terms of the Travelocity, Expedia, Orbitz, uh, TripAdvisor, you know, those types of sites. Um, but that you also want to, and, and Google Travel, uh, where you want to um, look at who the majors are and look at how you can participate better uh, with those. I also, the, another point that I wanted to make is that these are going to change in the future in that I think that the virtual persona of the individual booking is going to come into play that not only will there be a um, you know what location what price range what date uh, there will be the ability for you to plug in your virtual persona um, so that it will be able to give you the accommodation that best fits my specific needs my priorities my preferences uh, my style so that it will feed me back better results uh, than previous. Okay, great. So that's all the questions. Thanks again, Susan, and thanks everybody for joining us today. We hope to see you next week in our course with Roger Brooks when he talks about seven things you need to do to effectively market your destination. So thanks everybody and have a great day. Bye-bye.